opinion, I don't, I don't understand why people think it's hyperbolic, but you as the founder and executive director and chairman of the board for Justice of Greenwood, a am I lying? Did I miss something? Did I no, did no, exaggerate? I mean, Correct me if I need to be corrected, sir. You're not exaggerating at all, and it's good. Our people really need to understand what we're talking about. And, you know, Tulsa is the greatest example of what we're talking about. You know, if you go back looking out of enslavement, when chattel slavery ended in the United States of America, 1865, at the end of the Civil War, Black people went into the Reconstruction period, 1866 to 1876. It was probably the greatest era of our people because we were actually getting free from our physical chains. We were able to move around more freely. We were getting educated. Right. We were getting land. We were able to finally make money. And guess what? The federal government was on our side. The federal government had federal mm -hmm. troops in the South protecting us. You know, best it wasn't perfect, obviously, but they had troops there protecting right. us. The amendments, 13, 14, 15, the amendments were passed. We had right. people like Thaddeus right. Stevens in the Congress that were fighting for us. I mean, things were things were on an upward trajectory. And then what happens? The Hill, Hayden Till, Tilden Hayes Compromise of 1876, they, they pull the federal troops out of the South. And what happens? We basically re get re-enslaved into Jim Crow, black codes, and violence, lynchings, hmm. thousands and thousands of lynchings that we know about. And two, we went all over this world, all over this nation, looking for a free place, places like Wilmington, North Carolina, places like Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Greenwood, and hmm. built thriving communities. And it got so bad that these people have so freely believed that they could do what they want because the law wouldn't protect us, that what? They bombed and, and burnt us down all over the nation, including the largest ever here in Tulsa with the Tulsa Race Massacre. So what you're saying and that little small history lesson I just gave is not it is not an exaggeration. We've seen this before. This is 1876. This is yeah. the end of Reconstruction. And we have an opportunity to do all we can to stop it. And for you to sit on the sideline and say, I'm not going to do anything about it. I'm not going to vote. I'm not going to participate. That is crazy because it doesn't matter. It's just like, you know, somebody say, hey, it's hot regardless if you believe the sun is hot or not. The flame mm -hmm. is hot regardless if you believe the flame is hot or not. And I know what these people can do because they did it to my community. They rent, they blew down, they burnt down a community of over 11,000 people, over 1,500 mm -hmm. homes, $200 million in property damage, over up to 3,000 people dismissed and never heard from again. We don't know if they were killed. We don't know if they were buried alive. We just never heard from them again. And now we have a court system who 103 years later is telling us we have no remedy. Even though, yes, you have a merit, your, your claim is, has merit, your survivors are still alive. We agree that the massacre happened, but we don't believe that this fits within our law. This is what we're dealing with when we're talking about this administration and this election. Hmm. That part, this doesn't, yes, you have a claim. Yes, this thing happened. Yes, this would be a valid argument, but this doesn't fit within our law. To me, Demario, what that says is this doesn't fit within the parameters of whiteness. It doesn't fit in within the parameter, because if these were white residents of, of Tulsa, Oklahoma, who had experienced something this awful, we have no, no doubt in our minds that they would have already been duly compensated the same way that the Confederate soldiers and their wives and offspring received reparations for tell the loss of them. the enslaved labor. Tell so them. so what that... Yeah, what that's telling me is that, it. yeah, you got a legal claim, but in the whiteness of the law, your legal claim evaporates into the power of magic eraser whiteness because they do not want to extend justice to those for whom they never envisioned justice actually applying. Absolutely. And this is why we're calling upon President Joe Biden to fulfill his promise to our survivors. And, and this can help save his election. Remember, three years ago, President Joe Biden came to Tulsa. He met with my survivors personally. He promised them he would stand with them and ensure that they get justice. That was in a private meeting. Then he went out and gave a public speech at the Greenwood Culture Center where he talked about the massacre being the, the worst domestic terrorist event in America. He talked about the need to confront this injustice. He talked about that he would stand with black Americans to make sure we got racial justice and e equity. Well, three years later, here we are, we've been failed by the courts, we've been failed mm -hmm. by the Congress, and now we're calling upon President Joe Biden to utilize his power to ensure that the DOJ opens an investigation into the massacre. How can you have the largest, not just the largest domestic terrorist event to ever happen in the United States history, but it's also the largest crime scene in the history of the United mm. States. And it's never been investigated by any criminal, any criminal investigation. And the federal government has a duty. Joe Biden, President Joe Biden has a duty. And as black people are right now trying to figure out 
Why should I stand in these long lines? Why should I fight against this voter suppression? Mm. Does it really matter? George Floyd Act didn't get passed. Does it really matter? Voting Rights Act didn't get passed. Does it really matter? We can't get seem to get anything that we have been asking for reparations to get passed. This is something that Joe Biden, President Biden's administration can do. This is an easy thing that they can do to show black people that they do care about us. They do hear our, our cries. They do understand our wants. The destruction of Tulsa was not just a destruction of people in Oklahoma. It was a destruction of black America. It was a destruction of black wealth. It was a destruction of black organization that would have put our country, our people in a better position than what we're in now. President Biden, we need you to fulfill your promise to these survivors, 110-year-old Viola Ford Fletcher, 109-year-old Leslie Benefield Randall. She was with me yesterday at our press conference, and then we had lunch afterwards. This is a living, breathing person who was victimized and endured the massacre. She's asking, she's asking, where is President Biden? Will he help? Will he fulfill his promise? President Biden, if you fulfill your promise to Mother Fletcher and Mother Randall, it would also help this election for our people to feel like, yes, you do care about us. And, you know, one of the things that I, I think is so important is I, a lot of people were very disappointed when President Biden came out after uh, the Supreme Court issued their opinion, which gives the president immunity. And we shouldn't have been because we know Joe Biden uh, is, is what Dr. Caritha Mitchell would say is somebody who whether he's he definitely ain't perfect. But he, I think, tries within the context of this country to be a good and decent person, uh, whether we agree with his decisions or not, is not the issue. And, and so no one is fearful that President Joe Biden is going to wield the power of the king. Because they know how Joe Biden rolls, but we are clear that Donald Trump would do that. And so when he came out and confirmed he was not going to wield this new power that had been given to him, part of me was like, God damn it. We're back at the Hilden Tays com uh, a compromise again, that 1877 compromise. I need the people in power who want us to vote for them to recognize, baby, you fighting white supremacy. Okay, yeah, now I know that these are also your cousins, so you're not that clear about, you know, it's kind of hard for you to figure out how to navigate, how to fight. But we the blacks, we the people who done been here and then had the foot on our neck from the time that we got here, we need you to go to battle, Joe Biden. We need you to, because at the end of the day, if you don't, if you maintain this, I'm going to be good and I'm going to follow the traditional limitations and you lose, then we are, pardon my language, I don't want to permeate this conversation with fuckery, but we're fucked in some big ways. And so I need Joe Biden to not be so worried the way many white leaders on the Democratic side are. These white moderates, many of them are so concerned about process, they're concerned about procedure, and they lose the substantive point, which is these mofos just took over the damn nation. And they, as the Heritage Foundation president will say, this is the second American revolution. It will be bloodless. If the left acquiesces and agrees and we need somebody who's going to stand up, I do think that if he were to follow through on this promise of investigating this crime scene, having the Department of Justice and the Civil Rights Division under the, the brilliant leadership of attorney Kristen Clark, who I know you and I both have a lot of respect for, Absolutely. that would definitely be a signal that, okay, we see gloves is off. We got some gloves. We're going to take ours off, too. Absolutely. And, it, you know, it's, it's not a, it's not even a heavy lift. Right. It's not even a heavy lift. We're not asking. We're not even saying President Biden use your executive power to make sure that these survivors get compensated, which they are absolutely should right. be compensated. We're not saying that you come in and rebuild Greenwood, the buildings and the businesses that was burned down. We're not even asking you for that. We're asking you for your Department of Justice to utilize the Emmett Till Cold Case Civil Rights Act of 2007 which was reauthorized in 2016. So I want everybody to understand, this is an act that gives the federal government the right to investigate civil rights claims and, and uh, uh, crimes that occurred between 1920 and 1970. This is already on the books. This is not something extraordinary. This is not something special just to have happen. This is something that can happen tomorrow. It can easily mm -hmm. happen. And you're right, this would be something that's just a signal to this nation to this nation that we're gonna use all the power that we have in our hands to make sure that we not only right the wrongs of the past, but make sure that we're showing and signaling that we're gonna to continue to fight for the future of, our, of our, our people, of civil rights, racial equity, and what people like to call our democracy. Now, we can talk about what that really means in the American context and a different deal. Right. But I wanna make this right, point. Right. Have you ever seen the movie Gangs of New York? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You, that you was remember a that part, uh, expose on America. <laughs> you remember the part when the butcher came over to the Irishman and he was challenging him for a fight and he came out, the Irishman came out with his big stick and he said, people are the five points. 
You see Bill the Butcher here, he wants us to fight in the old way, but we don't do it that way anymore. And he looked at Bill and he said, come on, Bill, let's do this like civilized men. Let's come in and talk about it. And Bill said, ah. as soon as the Irishman turned around, what did Bill do? He threw that meat cleaver and put it in his back. Then he went up to him, he took, the, the, took his bat and bashed his brains in. That is where we are with the Republicans and the Democrats. The Republicans are Bill the Butcher. Mm. The Democrats are mm. the Irishmen. And, we are, and the problem is that we will have our heads bashed in the most. We know we will be the ones that right. will be caught on fire. We're the ones that's going right. to be deported. We're the ones that's going to go to prison. We're the ones going to, like you said, going to have our channels shut down. This is why we're not talking about, mm. is it, do we love Joe Biden or we want to push the Democrats? We are talking about our lives. We're talking about our families. We're talking right. about our generations. This is what I tell everybody. Go look at that games in New York and see yeah. that parallel because that is what is going yeah. on. Right now. We should have our oh, hands brother. Our making sure we're pushing back. Brother, you hit the nail on the head with that one. That that film was actually really good at just blatant. This is America. These are the roots. This is what it is. Violent. It's bloody. It's what it is. We'll kill each other. We'll kill you. We'll kill wantonly because that's what we do. But that scene is particularly important. And I'm so glad that you raised it because a lot of folks are, are out here acting like people who are trying to encourage folks to get out the vote and to be civically engaged. They're acting as though oh, it's because we love Joe Biden. I don't need you to lie. I don't right. even. I, you might might not be able to stand Joe Biden. This ain't got nothing to do with him. I right. keep saying, why are y'all looking for an orgasm in the voting booth? Do that elsewhere where there are devices and things you can do with. It. Don't do that in the voting booth. This is about our lives. Business and Demario, unfortunately, your your clients are seeing what that looks like in real time. Give us some insight as to where they are standing right now after that devastating blow from the Oklahoma Supreme Court. Uh, this is now, I, I believe you said you were going to be asking the Supreme Court to review its decision. But now going to the federal government, this it almost feels like we're at the last grasp phase of this. How are your clients navigating this right now? You know, it's interesting because these women are 110 and 109. And I say it all the time because it's extraordinary to realize that they are like full fledged living human beings that are still talking, walk, you know, walking around, eating, you know, in conversation with you at 110, 109. And I make that point because they see some stuff. OK, mm -hmm. You think about yeah. somebody born in 1914, a black woman born in yeah. black in 1914, what they what have, that they have seen, what they have experienced, what they have had, had overcome. So while they're they're thoroughly disappointed uh, in the federal, in the Oklahoma state uh, system, mm. they still have resiliency. They still have belief that justice will happen because they're still here. Hey, listen, they've lived all this time. Right. So right. they, they, hey, they like, look, we're here for a purpose. We're here for a reason. Mm. And that's why they were front and center calling upon President Biden to do what's right. Now, you also mentioned we did file a, what's called a petition for rehearing with the Oklahoma Supreme Court. It is the very last document that we're able to file on this particular case itself. We, we did that. We, you know, this uh, people, people do it often. It's very rarely granted. We understand that, but we're going to use everything in our power to move this forward in the judicial system in the state of Oklahoma. I do want to say that it's not, regardless of what happens with that petition to rehearing, it's not over. It will never be over until we get justice for those survivors, okay. descendants in this community and for our people. We have other strategies that we're going to employ, but this is why we want this meeting with President Biden. This is why we want the Department of Justice to come in. Because one of the things that was so important for us, uh, Marie, when I say us, I'm saying all of us who are fighting for justice for the Tulsa race massacre, it's not just about reparation and reparatory justice from a monetary standpoint, although that is very, very, very central and important. But we still only know very little about the massacre. We still only know about 10 percent because of many of the documents and the history and the information is not with our people. It's with the perpetrators. Wow. And we have no way to get that information without discovery. They're not going to give it to us. They've been hiding it for 103 years. We know that there was valuable items taken that are still owned by people that took them. We know there's valuable documents that are still owned. This is something that there was a, even a show, The Equalizer with with um, with uh, Queen Latifah. Oh, Queen Latifah. Oh yeah. wow! They did a whole show about this with Jada Pinkett's auntie had a painting stolen, and they was talking about the Tulsa massacre. They found it. That's wow. real life stuff. We can never know those items for sure if we don't have discovery, if we don't have a true investigation. These are the things that an investigation will allow us to do. Plus, you're talking about murder. 
Murder has no statute of limitations. That's murder right. occurred. Murder needs to be actually investigated. But you're talking about rape. You're talking about kidnap. You're talking about burglary. You're talking about robbery. You're talking about arson. You're talking about defacing uh, places of worship. You're talking about defacing uh, dead bodies. These are all heinous crimes that no one person, one entity has ever been held to account for. Attorney Simmons, do you, do you have to go at the top of the hour? Uh, no, I can hang on for a little okay. bit. Okay, uh, because I see a ton of calls coming in and I want to get to the calls, but I, I do want to, before we go to this commercial break, what is it that you need us to do? You are demanding this meeting. Uh, you want this investigation. How can we, the audience, help? And then we're going to get to some of your calls. I see some some good comments. I see some interesting comments coming through. Uh, what is it that we should be doing to uplift this demand now? Well, two things you can do right now, right now. Go to justiceforgreenwood.org and right on the front page there it says stand uh, stand with our survivors. You click that, it's going to give you a menu of things to do on Justice for Greenwood, which includes in connecting with us on our newsletter because we're going to be rolling out a big campaign after the holiday. We want you all to be a part of that. But after you do that, I want you to email Merrick Garland, Attorney General Merrick Garland at uh, ask, ask, ask dot crt at usdoj.gov. That's ask.crt at usdoj.gov and tell Merrick Garland you want the Department of Justice to open the investigation to the Tulsa race massacre. And after you do step one and step two, I want you to tell three of your friends or family to do the same thing we just talked about. Go to justiceforinwood.org, sign up, email Merrick Garland. And what's give us that email address one more time, Demario. It is ask, so that's ask, ask.crt at usdoj.gov and crt that's as ask dot crt at usdoj.gov okay thank you for that we're going to tweet that out and make sure folks are aware uh let's get one of these calls on the line before we go oh the one i wanted to oh okay no here we go, here we, go. we got a lot of okay i'm sorry i had to refresh the page uh <laughs> let's go to uh line three let's go to john in indiana first time caller my mom made it, made it. Hey, John, what would you like to say this morning? Uh-oh, do we have John? Is John there? Oh, it says you're on the air, John. Keep John's line up because it sounds like he might be having a little difficulty. Uh, let's go to Stephen in California. Stephen, what would you like to say? Okay, Stephen's not ready. We're at the end of the break. We're at the end of the break. Come, okay, to, uh, take him down, please. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta be ready. Now you don't listen on. If you're on the phone, listen through the phone. Don't listen through the radio because it's it's on a delay. Uh, let's go to Devin in California. First time caller. Devin, you're on the air. Thank you for calling. What are your thoughts this morning? Um, yeah, first of all, I'd like to say you know it's tragic what happened in Oklahoma, especially when they're using this this as a tourist attraction at this time. Um, but I also Facts. like to say you're talking about an orgasm in the voting booth. Uh, we have to be real, with, you know, do the math. Uh, Joe Biden is polling only 1% higher than Harris, Whitmer, Newsom, and, uh, and, and a couple others. So we're going to put all of our eggs on a 80-some-odd-year-old man. Which poll are you talking one. about, sir? Which poll are you talking about? There's a poll that came out yesterday that all these people are just one percent lower. Than oh, uh, Amina, the do you Even do Kamala we? Have, okay, we we actually do have something for polls because I, a lot of folks have been talking about polls. A lot of folks are talking about President Biden uh, uh, leaving or uh, being replaced. Do you have so, who 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 are you suggesting that the Democrats would rally around if Joe Biden's not there? What's the who who are you at saying that point, should be? At this point, if you look at the map. If only if there if all these people are only polling one percent lower than Joe, then that means that with their energy and everything else that they can come out there with, and with their ability, Kamala Harris could easily. They're saying Kamala Harris in some polls is beating Joe Biden. Okay, so so here's the thing. Before. Here's the thing. Let's be clear. I mean, do we have the the concept on polls ready? Is that ready yet? Go 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 ahead. Please please let us hear what we think about the polls. Yeah. Uh huh. What's this song? All oh, right. I'm in love with the stripper. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Why are we in love with strippers? Because polls are for strippers. 
Polls are for strippers. So we're going to talk about polls. We can't name a poll. We don't know the poll. Polls are for strippers. It is July. Polls are not any factual indicator. Whomever would be taken over for Joe Biden's place. If this were to happen, Damari, I'm going to leave you out of this because I don't want to mess up your situation unless you want to chime in. Whoever would take their place, what field offices do they have out right now? Where, where, How many field offices do they have in any of the battleground states, let alone the ones that Dems are going to win, aside from the ones that Republicans are going to win? What money and fundraising do they have? because the multiple hundreds of millions of dollars that they have raised for the Biden-Harris campaign cannot just be transferred over. The Supreme Court, and, and I'm sorry, the, the Heritage Foundation and other Republicans have already said, if you take Joe Biden off the ballot, they're going to sue in front of the Supreme Court because you're violating the process and people came out and voted. There was a primary and they said they will sue. And we know the Supreme Court is going to say you took Joe Biden off the ticket. This is no longer a valid ballot. What are we talking about? Stop paying attention to polls. The only people should be paying the polls are the cast of P-Valley, my favorite show, which is not right now airing, and I'm very upset about it. So I need us to, if you're going to call and say we got to replace Joe Biden, tell me with whom and tell me the procedure that it can happen. Because according to my reading of the rules, it is not happening. Now, if something, as, as Dr. Greg Carr said earlier today, God forbid something were to happen uh, to President Biden, uh, then then that might throw toss the, the assessment. But quite frankly, I don't think anybody should be talking about replacing Joe Biden because every single time that has happened, the person or the party that did that lost the election. There is history. There is procedure. There there are rules and then there's just a the practical reality how quickly can this new person staff up a legal team to handle all of the cases coming in all of the 50 states that the republicans are going to launch because of this manipulation of the process we got to think differently and stop listening to the goddamn polls for your news